Hello, hello. Welcome to our show, Coffee with Chris. Uh, we're going to be talking about a great topic today. When your loved one with Alzheimer's does not recognize you. Welcome to our show, Coffee with Chris. Our mission is to provide you with home care tips, education, and resources to ensure you receive the quality care you deserve in the comfort of your home. What's up? What's up, everyone? How you doing today? Hope all is well with you and you had a great Memorial Day weekend with your family and you spent really good quality time with them. I know I did. I had such a great time with my family. We had a nice barbecue in my aunt's house. Ate so much. I definitely cheated on my <laughs> my uh, diet plan. But, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I definitely was at 240 pounds and I'm, you know, I'm at 219, but in the weekends I, I teeter-totter a couple pounds and I, and I need to really just be a little bit more consistent on that. But uh, my goal re re weight really is to get to 180. So I got uh, 20 pounds to get to that 200 mark and just working really hard on that. But, uh, you know, you know how the holidays are. It's, it's, it's tough, you know. <laughs> it's hard to say no to your auntie's food. And your mom's food <laughs> but you got to do it if you're trying to reach your goal right so today is a really important topic we want to talk about today is uh, when a loved one with alzheimer's does not recognize you this is a super important topic to talk about i know a lot of family members emotions are really high and strong during these times you know i every client i see that every when i'm sitting in the doing a living room visit with them and the family members and then you know that always the question pops up and hey mom you know do you know who i am and with the confused face on them. It's always a heartbreak for a family member to always witness that, especially from the beginning, or if it's your spouse, whoever it is, you just can't get used to that. And it's hard. And, you know, some family members really all deal with it in a different way, really, you know, as nearly as with nearly everything in life, we all cope with things in a different way. It really is. You can't compare each other, you know, and, and family members all have different behaviors whatsoever, but family members really do cope in different ways, in different scenarios. And this is just one scenario that you can't compare yourself to your neighbor of their experience with their parents or their, their spouse, whoever. But some people, while, you know, feeling deeply, you know, deep, deeply the sorrow of watching their uh, loved ones uh, that they're slowly declining, you know, and can, can still feel that they're, you can't, you can still feel that they are communicating with you in a specific way. And I'm going to talk to you about this in just a little bit, some some tips to help you out with this that work. But for some people, it doesn't work. You know, the relationship just starts to change, you know, with your spouse and your, your loved one, or it could be your client that you're dealing with. But the person with the disease is still there. You have to understand that they're still there. You know, we just keep working on the communication you know, with their loved one and, and your, your loved one in any which way possible. And you can never give up. You can't give up. You know, others see it as a devastated type of experience. And, you know, they, they start to feel like that. Why am I going over to visit my, my loved one anymore? They don't remember me. And so they don't, you know, this doesn't make them a bad person because they are going through a, a, a disease that they are that they that they have it's not them it's more for you it's more you you have to be able to kind of cope with this in a specific way and make them feel important you know you know the way we communicate with the people that we love is going to be so important on how you comfort them you know becoming educated about this type of disease is going to be so important so you know one tip is just don't give up don't give up on your loved one you know doing your best for the ones that we love, no matter what condition it is, for better or for worse, is that we'll make the best for each other in the long run, right? That's what we hope. But also, too, is, is it doesn't work out always for every single individual. Sometimes there's just no special antidote that you're going to give to make this work. You know, and especially when there's physical abuse and there's mental abuse that can happen, it's sometimes family members, enough is enough. They can't, you know, be able to to, you know, care for their loved one in, in their homes, you know, and, but it's important to know that how we interact with each other and how this is affected. And, you know, it, it does pay off in many numerous ways, you know, no day is going to be perfect, you know, and often you'll feel as if your efforts really do not count. And this is normal. Okay. You're not going through a situation that a lot of people don't feel. This is a normal type of feeling. However, you know, um, 
the, the amount of tries have to be uh, unlimited. So do your best for those that you love one. Don't give up, okay? And it's a really, really important to understand that. Um, you know, not being able to recognize your parent or your spouse, it doesn't mean that you were forgotten. This is a common thing that I hear all the time, you know, and I and I see that family members feel that they're that they were forgotten. Why should I visit them anymore? Again, that's what you know, this is the feeling. Why do I have to go through the pain of sitting with them, you know, and when they don't even know who I am? But I, I know it, how you feel. I know it's heartbreaking. You know, my parents, are, you know, we're going through this. And I can't, I dread the t dread them if they do go through this. You know, I, I see enough family members with the heartbreak. But I could, can, if I can only give my advice, my type of experience is that you to understand is that, you know, your loved one has not forgotten about you. They haven't. You have to get that out of your head. You have to understand that this is not about you. Okay. You know, it's, you did not do anything wrong and they didn't do anything wrong for them to get a disease. But it's understanding that the, the comforting them and, and your touch of your hand and holding their hand and telling them that they love you. And the, and the tone of your voice, this, your sound makes a big difference and it quantifies the the, the person, uh, whoever is going through this disease to make them feel a little bit more comfort and make, and that makes them feel that they're loved. You know, a person with Alzheimer's can still feel love and comfort and you need to really get to center yourself and your thoughts to be able to understand that. You know, it is believed that people, you know, even with, who have who go into comas that they can still hear your conversation around them. So why can't they still feel if they have Alzheimer's, you know, and they, uh, it, it, really does or does even if they do or don't understand you know they still can feel you know touching their hand like i said grabbing you know and hugging them and giving them a little massage and making them feel that they're important caring for your loved one has to be unlimited you know speaking to them and treating them like a human being is going to be the center of the reason why you are there you know, when the, you're visiting your parents, you're stopping by at a facility, going to their homes, whatsoever. The center is, is that you're going to treat them with the highest level of, 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 of giving them the highest level of love. And, and, and it, they do feel it. So if you put them forward, you put them first and treat them and, and perceive them as the, that this, you know, you're, they, 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 they have not forgotten about you and you look and, and you're going to give them the most amount of love. You're not going to lash out on them and make them feel any bad or any bad, make them feel bad or worse that they're making a choice or a decision. You know, it's, it, I always say if, they, if they're in a safe environment and if they choose to do or say what they want to say, sometimes in a, it's good to sometimes just roll with it and go with the, I agree type of mentality you know you, you it's not worth ever arguing with a your loved one or a spouse when they have dementia and alzheimer's but there's just different ways how you can handle it and you know depriving them of their interaction is the last thing you want to do okay love and comfort is going to be the number one thing that you want to concentrate on and so one tip i wanted to you guys to do and take a home take home with this is that having a timeline or collage is going to be so important and and having it from the point of time like when you were you know a baby from your your teenage years adult years when you're in college all the way up to you know to the current day and letting them see you progress you know there is long-term care memory that can still be established and they might not remember you as the 50 year old child they might remember you remember you as a 20 year old and if you have this timeline and and, and show them it's amazing how it works and it does work no matter what condition it appears for them to be in they still can be able to uh to recognize uh, so when they have long-term care memory, really try it. I'm really telling everyone, if you haven't done it, you got to. Now, again, it doesn't happen. Every person is different. It doesn't always happen. We're a lot that way, but sometimes the disease does progress into that. So we never want to be responsible of one, depriving them in their interactions. We need to make sure that you are not, you understand that you're not forgotten. Okay. All right. And so the timeline could often trigger, you know, very important, you know, remembrance. And so, you know, a spouse m might remember uh, the times that you were dating, you know, during the time of courtship, you know, either way, the exercise does trigger 
uh, a person with Alzheimer's and dementia and understanding the role of how you played in their life. You So um, the, the exercise is great and it works like magic, but for some it doesn't. But it, when it does, it's truly intriguing. This technique may be short-lived, you know, during, like I said, during the disease process, maybe happen in the beginning or it might happen towards the middle or the end or whoever, but, you know, never stop giving up. Get, you know, this is, uh, you're stimulating uh, really, really good emotions uh, for for them. You know, families that do cope with this in many different ways, you know, nearly, you know, ev everything in life, the way we cope, cope with these type of diseases, we, we start to see a little bit of, um, you know, deep sorrow because of their going through this decline and, you know, still communicating with them on a, on a high level uh, does help with the disease progress of making your, your mom and your dad just feel happy, feel loved, you know, and it's, it's devastating. I know, you know, but it doesn't make them a bad person again. So don't give up on them. Just understand that this is something that's important. Wanted to do this podcast uh, on this specific topic because I, I know a lot of fan members are going through this during these times and and, and during with COVID. You know you're 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 seeing your loved ones a little bit more, and you're you're a lot of fan members are caring for their parents, and uh, and they can't go back to work, and and it's hard. They even find home care providers who can't can't provide the care that they need and they still have to step in. So you know, constant reminders of, of dealing with this daily routine can be really, uh, 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 you know, a, a tough, tough, tough task on a daily basis. But, but remember that, you know, this is your parent, this is your spouse and that you got to do everything that you can. And I always say, so you don't have any type of regrets whatsoever. Um, but at the same time, you know, we've to discuss this in one of my, my other podcast is that care, there's caregiver burnout and it happens and you have to take breaks for yourself too. But when you do go and visit or when you're with your loved one, you got to have your, your mind right. So I hope everyone has a great um, day and uh, look forward to our next podcast. Take care and have, have a wonderful week too as well. Welcome to our show, Coffee with Chris. Our mission is to provide you with home care tips, education, and resources to ensure you receive the quality care you deserve in the comfort of your home.